Hi, I'm Timo Wolf, and one and a half years ago I couldn't write a single line of code. Now I create an online multiplayer card game with its own ranking and economy system, called A Glimpse of Luna. It's a tactical battle card game, where players place and move their cards to destroy their opponent's army. Before battle, players choose between different races and their characters to build a deck. The game has its own in-game currencies, with which players can unlock cards. Furthermore, I implemented our own ELO-based ranking system. Today's video is the first one of a series, in which I'll show you guys how I managed to do that. But before we get into it, if you would like to know more about the game from a developer perspective, check out this video. For part 1 of the series, I will cover questions like which engine and language did I use, how did I learn the language, and of course, which video, channels or courses helped me the most. So, I decided to learn Unity and c -sharp. Unity was basically chosen because of three things. First, it's the most popular one, which means there will be a lot of content online, be it videos or tutorials. Second, we did some research to find out which engine other games of this genre use, like Gwent for example. And lastly, there was a free version to try it out. Regardless of the fact that for Unity c is a must, I found out that c seems to be a great language overall. It is easy to learn, but complex, and it's very popular, similar to Unity or probably because of Unity, which is very important again if you're looking for help in the internet. I think without the thousands or millions of threads, it wouldn't have been possible for me to achieve what I did. Certainly not in such a short period of time. So to some degree, it's a collective achievement of the whole community. Shout out again to everybody sharing their knowledge for free online. Okay, how did I learn it? Well, besides the very short theoretical part, I did actually use the motto, learning by doing. And what may surprise you, I didn't do any small game project beforehand. I started to work on our project immediately. I was directly faced with problems which concerned our specific game. In hindsight, I think it was a great choice. Then today I know how big game development is. The spectrum of different use cases is huge. For different genres, we need different solutions or approaches. Of course, there are also a lot of general things which are required for every project, but when it comes to the actual genre of your game, things you have learned through some other tutorials might be useless. For example, moving a ball through an area might share similarities to games where there is a player's object, such in an RPG or FPS game, but not in a card game. So, if you know what type of project you're aiming for, or if you even have some concept already, my tip is to start right away with your own project. You have nothing to lose, only to gain. When it comes to the short theoretical part I was doing beforehand, I read a book on how to learn C-sharp to a certain point until I thought, okay, now I need to apply these things before reading further, because so far I'm not really fully understanding it. And from that point on, it was all about Googling, right from the beginning. First, it started with questions about things I just had learned, like the whole basic stuff, such as variables, functions and operators. Then I watched some really basic videos explaining the same stuff again on the official YouTube website. I'll add the link to the description because I remember the videos being really awesome. And finally, I found a course on Udemy after googling how to create a card game in Unity. And with that course, the whole journey as a dev really began. The great thing about such courses or any video basically is that you can watch it over and over again while simultaneously trying to follow every step. In my case, I had to watch things hundreds of times while googling for basic stuff since I had no Unity experience at all. I think one great skill I developed throughout this journey is the ability to accept that you don't need to understand it all down to the last detail as long as you understand what it's used for. If you don't learn to accept that, especially in game development, I think you are going to rip your hair off. For me, it was very hard since I always wanted to understand everything I am doing. But once I found the right balance, I was able to speed up my progress and over time, with more experience, things I haven't fully figured out until that point suddenly became very clear. So be patient, have faith in your ability and don't beat yourself up. It can become very hard sometimes, especially when things are not working and you don't know the damn reason for it. It's madness, really, and I do understand. I have been through that many times and at one point I shifted my perspective which changed everything. Instead of focusing on specific tasks of a project plan 
and chasing to finish certain parts of our project within a certain period of time, I focused on the most basic and simple measurement there is, namely time. As one of my idols once said, if you put it in, you will succeed. I was a novice, still learning, so without any experience it was not only stupid of me to make any predictions on when I'm going to finish this or that, but also impossible. So I set the following goals. Working on our project, whether actively or doing some research, for 10 hours, 20 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours, 200 hours, 300 hours, and so forth, until 1000 hours, I believe. I thought if I put hundreds of hours into a craft, there will be a point where we'll be able to create the things we need. And that's what happened. Suddenly it started to feel great. Even if I worked for 10 hours and there was no real progress visually recognizable, I felt great at the end of the day. I knew I came one step closer to my goal. Alright, that was it for today. If you liked the video and found it useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free and helps to spread the world. In the next part, I will share tips on how I did manage to find the right content to solve problems for my project. Furthermore, I will reveal how I added layer by layer to the project so it became what it is today and also what my thought process is when coding and creating the UI. So, see you next time and have a great day.